Okay, hi everyone, this is Amit with an on-demand tutorial, this time as requested by Mr. Kuma 197 No. If I am not able to make a tutorial on every request, you have to excuse me on that, because I have very limited time to make tutorial these days, but please feel free to write in uh, your suggestions and ask questions if you have any, and I'll try my best to reply them as soon as possible. So what Mr. Kuma wanted to know is how you can animate particles based on a sound file. Now before we see that, let's see how we can animate anything based on a sound file. So let's start 3ds Max and see how we can do that. So here we are in 3ds Max. Let's create a box. And all these parameters that you see here can be controlled using a sound file. So we'll go to the curve editor and not only a sound file, but you can see if I select the height and assign a controller to it, we have all these controllers available to use and control the height of our box but we aren't audio float for now and this audio controller dialog opens up now we have to select our audio file here and let's see what these parameters uh, are about the minimum and maximum value of the controller range is mapped to the highest and lowest point on the graph of the audio files volume level the threshold crosses all the values to zero that is below a certain level. At zero it crosses nothing and at one it crosses everything. And any value in between crosses the lower sound levels below that value. This is to make uh, the peaks, the peak values more prominent and give your visual a neat look. If you are using a stereo track you can select the channel you want to use here. We will leave it at mix. We want our box to have some initial height so we will set the minimum value to something like 20 and now our box will animate from 20 to uh, upper values. The oversampling uh, samples your audio files for more accuracy. You can also use, uh, use uh, this controller interactively if you have an audio input device. If you now hit the play button you will see that the height of the box is animated. I think we should uh, reduce the threshold of the audio controller. So we will go to the graph editor and just double click the height and zero out the threshold. Now you can see more prominently how the height of the box is animated according to the wave file. And not only the height, any track, with, uh, any parameter with its separate track can be animated like this. As you can see, if I assign the audio controller to the width of this box and give it some minimum and maximum value, you will see it will be the width of the box will be animated according to the audio file as well. So if we play. You can see here the both the height and width of the box we have created is now animated according to the wave file and the audio wave file we have selected. Now let's reset Max and talk about how to manipulate particles using this technique. So I have a plane here and we will animate its motion along the z-axis using an audio file. So I will open up the curve editor and assign an audio controller to the z position and select our audio as the source and set the maximum to about 40. Now if we, play, if we hit the play button you will see it, the moment of the 
a plane is animated along the z-axis according to the audio file. Now I have already created a very basic particle setup as you can see here. I am using this plane as uh, the emitter object and particles are being worn over 100 frames and getting deleted by edge. And the particles are locked on the emitter so they will move according uh, to the movement of the emitter as well. Now if I hit the play button you will see the particles are also animated along with the object. And now if I turn on the speed test operator here, you will see that the particles will move to even 2 if the speed exceeds the value that I define in the speed test operator. So the animation will look like this uh, as the particles are animated along with the object, the plane in this case, uh, the speed varies and uh, as the speed gets more than what we have defined in the speed test operator it goes to event 2 and you can see it is displayed in uh, reddish yellow color and from this point you can use your creativity and make the particle animation more appealing by using space wraps and tweaking the parameters uh, till you get the look that you like so I'm just tweaking some parameters here and this is how this animation looks and if you want to hear the audio uh, while the animation is being played you can go in here and add the audio file here and close this dialog and now you can hear the audio as your animation is being played along the timeline so here I am tweaking the parameters a bit more to give the animation a, a little more interesting look and I really don't like the flat look of these particles the way they are emitted it looks very flat so what I'll do is I will use a modifier to animate the shape of this emitter object so I'll add in an affect reason modifier and I'll animate the end point of this so we'll go to the curve editor and remove the controller that we have assigned to the z-axis jet position and change it back to Bezier float and find the uh, end point track of the modifier and assign an audio controller to it and you can see it has three components uh, for its range but we only want to affect it in the z direction so we will put 25 in the maximum value of z and give it some oversampling and select our audio and now if I hit play you will see the particles are not emitting according to the uh, emitters animation so we will go to the particle view and turn on uh, animated shape here and now you can see the particles are uh, being generated over the animated surface or the animated uh, emitter object and now if I increase the fall of here you'll see that uh, our particle animation has now a bit more interesting look than what we had before And now you can go on tweaking these parameters till you get an interesting looking particle animation. Now though this technique is very accurate and the particles uh, though react uh, to the sound file very accurately sometimes uh, it is not very visually compelling so you have to do some manual animation as well. And in the next chapter we will see how we can use some manual animation technique along with this <coughs> automated technique uh, to make very compelling uh, particle animations using audio files.